Hello everyone, it has definitely been a while since we had a GTEL review. Now let's start off with the GTEL X7S and see what it had. So taking a look at the GTEL X7S, uh, it is a big device, it's, it's fabled territory if uh, that class of device still even exists. But yes, it is a really big phone, 6.2 inches of display is no joke and it's, the, it's, it's got a notch on it. It's got a notch on it. And this again is a trait that you will see across the whole GTEL X7 series. All their devices have a notch. They're trying to push the boundaries to make the display go as close to the edges as possible to provide you a full screen experience. And yeah, we know notches have existed for a while now. So looking at, looking at the phone, the user interface is pretty smooth. It's a toned down version of the GTEL skin. This GTEL X7S is running Android 8.1 Oreo and uh, everything is where we are used to seeing it. Your notification tray with all the common shortcuts is over there. You have your navigation buttons at the bottom there. You can swipe left and right to access more apps. It doesn't come with an app drawer and uh, in the settings there doesn't seem to be a setting to hide all apps in an app drawer. Some people actually, in fact a lot of people actually prefer this approach, arranging all your apps on the home screen or just throwing them into folders, which is another option you can have if you don't really feel like having all the apps blocking your really nice Aurora wallpaper over there. Looks nice. Performance wise, this GTEL X7S is pretty smooth. It has a MediaTek processor clocked at 2 GHz and that is mated with 3 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of internal storage. So really everything is smooth. It's as smooth as it can be if you're scrolling in there. There's no lag, no stutter and um, even under heavy stressful use, the phone doesn't heat up much. Yes, it does get a little warm to just inform you that it's doing stuff but that's pretty much it, slightly warm, which is really fine uh, in today's standards. The display is plenty bright, uh, regardless of the tempered glass that's on there. Special instructions from GTEL not to remove it. I heeded your advice. <laughs> regardless of they having an extra glass layer on top of the display there, it didn't really ruin any of the color reproduction or sunlight visibility. The display still looks Fantastic and speaking of fantastic displays. This is probably one of the best looking displays that GTEL has put on their phones since the a7150 x4 mainly because that phone had an AMOLED display and also it was 1080p, but this is a really really close contender it's a really good display the colors are rich and punchy it's pretty to look at <laughs> so yes the display does come with a notch and um, some of y'all get triggered by the notch especially considering that when you open some settings like the settings <laughs> whilst the notch is engaged and you decide to scroll in landscape mode some pieces of text in the settings menu get clipped off with the notch and it kind of gets in the way and it ruins the whole user experience to some. Some don't care. But for those that uh, feel iffy about that setting, there is an option to hide the notch uh, within the settings. Uh, all you just have to do is go to settings and then go to display and go to switch screen display area. So there you can just toggle it on there and once it's toggled on, you are able to hide the notch by scrolling from the top left ear of the display, like so. So as soon as you scroll down, uh, the whole user interface shifts down by the width or the height of that notch. The problem though that I have with this form of hiding the notch is that everything moves down and there's no utilization of that black bar at the top which is hiding the notch. I would have preferred an implementation where stuff like your notifications, your clock, your battery, uh, stay at the top there so that at least you have more display area to work on considering that the display is not even AMOLED as well if it were AMOLED it would be easier because that top black bar will not consume any power uh, whilst you're using the device but since this is an IPS display it needs light to make colors even black 
and because of that even if you hide the notch you won't really save any power from that because the display will still be consuming juice whilst it's keeping that area black just a thought now also since the digital is running android 8.0 you are able to enable gesture navigation so gesture navigation is whereby you completely remove the navigation buttons and replace those buttons with gestures doing that gives you a bit more screen real estate to work with you don't have to continuously look for the hide button whenever you're enjoying some photos enjoying some videos or whenever you're reading stuff uh, the navigation buttons are always hidden and you can always perform the same task that the navigation buttons do using gestures so a simple one would be to go back to your home screen you would swipe from the bottom center of the display going up if you want to open the recent apps menu you just swipe from the bottom right of the display and then if you want to go back a screen or back a window then you just swipe from the bottom left of the device it's basically your buttons turned into little gestures so now we move on to the cameras the camera setup on the GTL X7S is a 13 megapixel main camera as well as a secondary 2 megapixel camera that's at the back and then at the front you have a 5 megapixel selfie camera with a flash so that you can take well exposed selfies so these cameras perform really well when you're in a really well lit environment so we're talking daytime environments when you're going outside taking photos outside and the like it takes really decent photos and it does come with a couple of extra features at two times telephoto zoom now i'm not too sure if the telephoto part of this zoom is uh, optical or digital but it is clear enough to be optical. I mean, you really don't see any digital interpolation in your shot. You don't really see any cropping. The image quality stays the same whether you zoom in or zoom out. It almost feels like two times lossless zoom. So uh, a thumbs up for that, for that feature. Uh, as I mentioned before, it has a really big battery. I was able to last about three days with the battery during testing during testing i'm talking taking these photos and videos playing some games even running our endurance test on the phone it really lasted a while so the setup on the digital x7s is really primed for endurance that's what it's all about if you want a battery that lasts and lasts it, this is a phone that lives up to the reputation of GTL having a battery that just lasts and lasts. So we go to the exterior of the phone. So uh, starting from the front, you have the display, 6.2 inch IPS LCD display. Right at the top on the notch area there, you have your 5 megapixel selfie, your earpiece, your sensors for controlling the automatic light adjustment of the display, as well as the selfie flash. At the back here you have the, the two rear cameras, a 13 megapixel main camera, a 2 megapixel secondary camera, the LED flash, fingerprint sensor, and at the bottom here you have these two grills which are supposed to be your loudspeaker grills and a little niblet right below them there. This one just raises the phone a bit so that the speakers don't get completely muffled up if you rest the phone on a flat surface. Moving on to the right side of the phone, you have your volume buttons and your power button. So this button arrangement goes across the board even on the X7 Pro and X7 Plus. You have the hybrid SIM slot, so you can have a dual SIM setup in this phone or you can have a single SIM plus a memory card. It can take up to a 128 gig memory card or more. Uh, 128 gigs was the biggest SD card I had, which I could test in the GTL X7S. On the top here we have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and then at the bottom here we have a micro USB port and the primary microphone. So the general build of the device is solid. It does feel like it's a bit on the budget side especially considering the extensive use of plastic. So the frame is plastic, the buttons are plastic and the top and bottom portions of the back panel are plastic as well. Uh, it's the center portion of the phone that's made out of this metallic material which is painted black. But nonetheless it has a really solid build. So the stuff that's not so cool about this GTL, play 
places they could improve was, first of all, micro USB is dated. Uh, we would have preferred seeing a USB Type-C there. I mean, we've been seeing USB Type-C's on GTEL since the X4, which was about about three years ago. It would have really been nice to see a USB Type-C on the GTEL as well. The second thing was that I could not find any hint of fast charging on the GTEL X7S, which is, which is a bit annoying because 4,000 milliamperes is a very big battery and uh, charging 4,000 milliamperes with a standard charger without any fast charging on it, it takes a while. It did take a while when I was charging this phone, probably around two, two and a half hours to get it to fill up from it being at zero percent. So I would have loved to see some fast charging on this phone. The cameras could use a bit of stabilization, whether it's electronic image stabilization or optical image stabilization. This camera seems like it could be able to perform much better if it just had some assistance with stabilization. So this has been the review of the GTL X7S. If you liked it, uh, hit like, hit subscribe, share this video with a buddy, and and you might not be able to get the GTL in our Texan store, but there are a whole lot of other gadgets that you can find in our store. Other smartphones, car chargers, power banks, you name it, all available in the Texan store. Take a look at it. I'm Edwin and I'll see you around.